last time I did a garden tour, we were in a really, really bad drought and there was really terrible air quality from the Canadian wildfires. Well, we're still in a pretty bad drought. We did get a little bit of rain. Okay, update. So if you saw my other videos, you know we're in a really, really terrible drought. So I was giving everything a uh, water and a boost. Well, not everything a boost to this, but a lot of things a boost to that because some things are just really dragging. Because even though I've been watering them, it's just not the same without the rain. And it's been so breezy and dry. <laughs> well, look, it's finally raining. It's a very, very light sprinkle, but it's better than nothing. And it figures I'm, I was watering everything and I was just about done and then the rain comes. And the radar showed it was gonna miss us, so I was like, well, I gotta go get it done. And then it rains, but I'm not gonna complain because I'm so, so, so glad it's raining. And it's very gentle, but I hope it keeps it up because we need it. But it got kind of scary up there because this huge gust of wind came and look. But nothing else really got disturbed besides that. But anyways, I'm not a maniac. I just ran out here because I don't normally do this, but I put the chicken's feeder outside for them. And I don't want the food to get ruined, so I'm gonna go put that in. It's been so long I had forgotten what rain was like. Isn't life funny like that? They're like, that's such a joke. I just spent all that time watering because it showed it was gonna miss us and then it popped back up. But like I said, I'm just happy we have it. I'm sure after this, the plants will really, really do a lot better. And hopefully all the seeds I had to replant will germinate now. Cause I've replanted things so many times this year. I've never had a spring like this. It's been so stressful. We've had really cold nights. We've had a lot of wind, it's been very dry, it's just, it's been very challenging. But life is going to test you sometimes and you just have to power through it and find a way. And then celebrate the small victories like this rainstorm. Monkey, give me a hug. Are you happy it's raining, Monkey? But it wasn't much, it didn't last very long. And it's been so breezy and windy, you can probably hear it behind me. That it's just dried everything out again. It's been such a weird, difficult, challenging planting season but all we can do is work with what we have. We gotta just tough through it and hope for the best. But I just wanted to give you another update. Remember when I harvested the broccoli, I told you that it would grow back, not like full heads, but like little shoots that you could harvest. It did, they're looking really nice, so I'm gonna pick those. You don't wanna wait too long or they'll go to seed. You can see this one is starting to head towards the stages where it's gonna do that. That one looks really good. And sorry if the audio is bad, because like I said, this wind is brutal. Ooh, look. So these are the first of the squash and zucchini. Now it is normal for the first set of the squash or zucchini to look a little bit funky like this one. That's totally fine. And then I thought this was funny. Siamese twins. Sometimes that'll happen. This is a gold zucchini. It's perfectly fine. You can eat it. It'll taste the same. I mean, you can't really sell it, at least not full price, because it's not pretty and people, you know, they buy with their eyes. But I mean, either I'll eat it or the chickens will. We don't care. And then here's some sprouts coming up. Cause I plant things like every two weeks, I'll replant a crop so that way I can have a, a continuing harvest over the season. Look, little baby patty pan squash starting to form. That's so cute. I've been having a really rough time still with rabbits eating the beans, but I got some of them. And look at the head on the cabbage. The cabbage is doing pretty well. There's the red cabbage. I'm actually gonna replant more corn this weekend. Some here came up late. I've had to replant a couple times. Weeds. Get rid of any weeds, we don't need that negativity. You can see the tomatoes are finally starting to grow. It's been, like I said, really windy, really dry, and at night really cold. So it's just been taking forever for stuff to take off. But now that they are starting to get some size to them, I'm gonna have to come through with some twine and tie them to this so they can grow up it. I'll be doing that. I don't know if I'll have time this weekend, but definitely the beginning of next week. And if you saw my tomato growing video, you'll understand why I'm doing this. When they're still little like this, you might get excited if you see that they're growing a tomato or like an eggplant or a pepper if it's one of those plants but pull it off when they're this young because that's just the plant pouring all of its energy into the fruit 
you want it to put its energy into actually growing so that way it can produce lots of good sized fruit and not just one random giant one. Oh, and some pumpkins started to come up. No, this one got trapped. So two germinated in this one. I'll let them go a little bit longer and see which one looks the healthiest and then I'll pull the other one out. Uh, so far, obviously that one looks like it's gonna be the stronger of the two, but you never know. Oh, and the cucumber beetles have started to come out. They're little yellow bugs with black stripes and they are awful. So I've been battling that, not fun. Oh, and the watermelon is finally starting to vine out. For the longest time, it just looks so stunted. Here's the moon and stars watermelon. They get their name because the watermelon itself, it'll have a really, really dark green, pretty outside with yellow polka dots on it that look like stars and moons. And it's cool because the vines actually get that look too. The cantaloupe looks pretty good. I replanted more of that too. This one looks really good. Cantaloupe. So now I'm gonna replant some purple peppers. Oh, and I'm also gonna plant a couple more pumpkins. These ones are called thumpkins, and they're really cute. They're really short and round with a really long stem. So I'm gonna do a couple of those. I've always wanted that variety, but they're really, really expensive. And then the store that I manage just so happened to get the seeds in, and I was able to get my discount because, you know, they're, it's such a pricey variety. So that helped. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna jump on this opportunity. You know, it would be really helpful if I brought a shovel with me. I'll be right back. All right, I got the shovel. So if you haven't seen my other gardening videos, make sure you check those out. But if you have seen them, then you'll know that I did a video all about how to grow tomatoes. Well, tomato tone obviously works well for tomatoes, but it also works really well for peppers. And I already planted all the peppers, got a lot to do. I got to stake them up because they'll get really top heavy. I don't want them falling over. I don't want the plants breaking, especially since we've had so much wind this year. But anyways, tomato tone is not just good for tomatoes. It's also really good for peppers. At least that's what I've found in my experience. It's low in nitrogen, and nitrogen makes things grow, so if you put a ton of nitrogen on a tomato or a pepper plant, you'll just get a huge plant, but not a lot of fruit. And it is high in phosphorus and calcium. And before I had this garden tilled, and before I had this plastic down to keep the weeds away and to warm up the ground, which by the way, I have a video on that too, I did put down some compost and fertilizer, but it doesn't hurt to side dress it with some more slow release. Now, you can see I have two plants here that were in the same pot. These are purple bell peppers. Just really, really gently separate them. That's actually why I did this, because I was like, ooh, a two for one deal. But yeah, this has probably been the most challenging planting season I've ever experienced. Oh, and these little leaves on the bottom, you can pull those off so that way you can focus more energy into the main part and grow. But like, it's, it's been cold, it's been dry. It's just been very weird, very challenging. There's so many things that I've had to go back and replant so many times. It's been really discouraging, but you just, you gotta keep going, you can't give up. But it's crazy, cause like, I saw, I saw bouquets and stuff like sunflowers and zinnias usually germinate and just grow really well. They're usually drama free, but this year I've just been having such a terrible time with it. All right, I'll get the rest of these planted and then I'll show you the rest of the garden. Okay, those are planted. I'm gonna pick some things now. I wanted to show you this real quick though. This is eight ball squash. I thought it looked really cute. All right, let's get to picking. So I've already started selling bundles of local produce and baked goods that we bake and that we grow. And it's gone really well and I'm, oh look, cucumber beetles. See, these are what I've been battling. Ugh, so frustrating. But anyways, I'm excited because now I can include squash and zucchini in the bundles this week. 
I used to do a farm stand, but my business partner who lived right by a really busy main road, so it was a perfect location for a farm stand, he moved out of state, but I didn't want to give up. So that's why I do it this way now, where people will order from me and then they'll meet me in town to pick it up. These funky looking ones I'm gonna pick too. That way the plant's not wasting energy on something I can't sell. If you've never grown squash or zucchini before, you might not know this, but like it grows so fast. So like if I were to leave this for another day or two, it would be so big by the time I would pick it, it just would be like no good. Here's some gold zucchini. Oh, there's a weed, don't need that. I actually think the gold zucchini tastes better than the green. Oh, and by the way, with these weird looking zucchinis, don't forget you can make all kinds of different things, including desserts and breads out of zucchini. Eggplant. Look at all the peppers. There's the yellow squash. Oh look, we got twins and yellow squash too. That's not quite as advanced as the zucchini is, but it looks good. They'll be ready very soon. So if you're worried about zucchini, or not zucchini, cucumber beetles, you can spray them with seven spray. Just don't do it on a windy day like this. Just, just don't spray if it's windy. now Monday. Our local bundles for this week are going to be sold on Wednesday. So I went up and checked the big garden and the squash and the zucchini are looking really, really good. I'll definitely have more to pick by then too. I also have some beets that are looking close too, but I'm hoping they can hold out and wait for next week's bundle, the rainbow beet. So check back for that. Hopefully they turned out good. I'm really nervous because of the drought, but I can already tell some of them are forming a good size. So fingers crossed that we get a, a nice bunch out of that. But yeah, the drought obviously is still going on. It's 90 degrees today, it's miserable out. It's very hot, it's very dry. Now the wind is not as bad as it has been. So that's one plus. And then there is a chance of rain towards the middle of this week. So fingers crossed, just pray for that. I really hope it doesn't miss us because we desperately need it. And then it was exciting because one of the local farms in our area that we buy wholesale from, they let me know today that they have peaches available the first of the season. So I'm really excited for that. I'm gonna get cherries and peaches from them to sell. My customers are really excited to hear that news. Eva's out here helping. See, Eva's weird. She does not mind this heat. She actually loves it. She'll lay in the sun and she'll sunbathe to the point where I have to make her move. So I'll have to keep an eye on her. But she's only been out here a couple minutes, so she's okay. And then on top of that, we're also going to make some soft gingerbread cookies dipped in frosting. And we've made those before and people went wild for them. So I think people are going to be really excited to see that offered this week along with our produce. So and this is not gonna go in the local bundle, but if you're wondering what I'm doing now, I'm actually gonna start doing succulent arrangements to sell. I raise so many different like cacti and succulents and houseplants, and I propagate a lot myself. I'm actually planning on making some videos on that, so make sure you subscribe because you don't wanna miss that. But anyways, I also am lucky enough that I have a local nursery very close to us, and they also grow succulents and wholesale them. So that's been helping me out because succulents are very slow growing. So it is very helpful to be able to get some from the nursery too. And like I said, it's still local, which is awesome because that's my main goal. So here's some that I got from them. They look really, really nice. And I'm gonna make some arrangements and sell those separately on the side. First, I kind of just like take a few that I think would look good together and then I arrange them before potting them. And then I'll probably put some stone in here just to make it look really pretty. And I'll write a little care guide for them. Now, for the most part, succulents like bright and direct sunlight. And obviously it's a desert plant. They like it really, really dry. And then a lot of people don't realize this. They think because it's a desert plant that when you do water it, just give it like a few drops or a little spray. But that's actually a bad thing. You, when it is time to water them, once their soil is completely dry, you want to soak them. Give them a nice big drink. And then since they have like nice big squishy leaves, 
That's because they store their water in the leaves. So you don't want to water them too often because, like I said, they're very good at storing the water. You don't want to make them rot. And again, I'll make a separate video on this because this I could go on for a while about this. There are certain varieties where you have to be really, really careful about watering them because if you do it at the wrong time of the season, you'll kill them, like no matter what. So you have to be careful with some varieties. Others are a little bit easier, a little bit more forgiving. And then any of the fuzzy varieties like this in particular, you want to make sure that when you're watering them, you don't get any water on the leaves. So yeah, I'm gonna plant these. And then I also got some terracotta pots that I'm gonna paint and make those look really pretty. So I'll show you that too. So succulents, and this is probably obvious to you, they like really well draining soil. Always make sure that there's drainage holes at the bottom of your pots. You can add some sand if you want. You can get a cactus specific soil and you can add some pumice stone to help keep things dry, help it drain really well. Cause you really, really don't want them sitting in wet soil. You want soil that's gonna dry quickly. And again, I'll make a whole video on this going into more detail. Today, we're just gonna get these planted and I'll show you the end results. Oh, and see how this leaf came off? Don't get rid of it, save it if this happens to you because if you place it in the soil, again, I'll make a full video on this, but if you place it in the soil, you can actually sprout a new baby plant off of it. So hold on to that. The tall one's gonna go in the back. But these just came from the greenhouse today. They all look really good and healthy. put some stone in here and like I said I'm not gonna film me potting all of these because that'll just take up too much time but I'll show you the end result. Time to pick more squash and zucchini. So I was really mad because earlier I came up here and there was a rabbit in my garden. And you know, they're a big issue. There's like no predators around here that take them out really. I mean, we have foxes and we do kind of have coyotes, but they don't really come quite as close to the yard, which in one way it's a blessing because I have chickens. So I don't want those around me because of that, even though they're fenced in, but still makes me nervous. But it's bad because the rabbits just overpopulate so much and they're such an issue for the garden. But then I had an idea. So since I already harvested the broccoli and I'm going to get these little florets off of them, I was going to, you know, rip up the plants and feed them to the chickens, but I'll just leave them here as a buffer so that way the rabbits eat that instead of my other plants. So let's hope that plan works. Now I do have, ooh, how did I not notice this the other day? <laughs> I was going to say, I do have purple cauliflower that's not been harvested yet. So hopefully the rabbits leave that alone, but that's beautiful. I'm gonna have to come back up here with rubber bands and tie that up so it doesn't get sunburnt. Oh no, there's a cucumber beetle in there. Which I don't think they typically go for cauliflower. I don't know why it's in there. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe they do like it. That's really exciting though. Not the beetle, the cauliflower. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to come back up here. Another thing for me to have to do tonight, but that's all right. That's just part of farming. Your list of things to do literally never ends. But back to what I came up here for. And I got to stake up these peppers. I got to tie up the tomatoes. So much to do. So you may have heard me talk about this in one of my other videos, but last year we had this crazy like pop-up freak tornado without warning and it destroyed completely, just it murdered my zucchini and my squash. So I'm very, very grateful that this year 
the zucchini and squash crop is looking so good. And I mean, as I learned the hard way last year, that could change in a day. But right now, everything looks good, so I'm going to be grateful for that. Gold zucchini. In my personal opinion, it tastes even better than the green. You want to be really, really careful because when you pick it, they're really nice and soft, and you don't want your fingernails to puncture the skin because then it won't look good. That one's not quite ready, but it probably will be within a day or so. These things grow so fast. Twist it nice and gentle so you don't break off the stem. I just posted my advertisement a little bit ago for this week's bundles and my phone's been blowing up with orders. So I'm just so, so incredibly grateful for that. Because when we first switched to the pre-order system instead of the farm stand, I was so scared that people weren't gonna be interested. But this is why I love living in a small town. Like our community is awesome. And it gives me even more motivation. Ooh, look at that. To, you know take care of all this stuff and to succeed and have it do well because it makes them happy weeds Oh, and I've said this before, but I do plan on making a video with some footage from that day of that crazy storm I keep talking about, so subscribe so you don't miss that. I've been really busy, so I haven't gotten around to making it yet, but I promise it will be coming soon. The twins are ready. Ooh, what was that bug? Oh, it's a cricket. I think I'll eat this one. But yeah, everything's really coming along. Oh, look, the corn's getting taller. Imagine how good it would look if we had some rain. That can go, I mean, you could pick it now, but I think I'll let it go one more day. All right, back to the house. It's really, really hot. I'm tired. I worked full time at my other job before coming home and doing the succulent arrangements and picking stuff and taking care of all the animals and the plants. And now I'm planting corn by hand because I don't have a corn planter. But you know what? Farming is going to test you and you need to learn to be resilient and to push yourself. And right when you start to feel like you can't go on any longer, that's when you really need to push yourself. And that's going to help you unlock potential that you didn't realize you had. And then when you do get it done and you prove yourself wrong and see that you can do it no matter how tired you are, you're going to feel so accomplished and so proud of yourself. 
It's crazy to think that this little teeny tiny seed is going to turn into corn and people are going to eat it. It's just incredible. I'm going to have to plant some more beans too. And then put down some nitrogen because corn really loves nitrogen. And fertilizer prices were at an all-time high last year. And people were complaining so much about the prices of corn and the prices of animal feed. And it's like, I guess maybe people didn't realize that fertilizer was so expensive or that the economy is in really bad shape right now. But when you work this hard only for people to complain about all the hard work you did and you just make very little profit off of it, it's like a, a punch in the gut. But if people do that to you, just stay calm, stay positive, and just educate them. Maybe they truly are just, you know, ignorant to what goes on in the world and how things are done. And just kindly and calmly explain that to them. And if they're still not happy, let them go. Let them go shop elsewhere. That's okay. You don't need that negativity. Don't give people a deal because they're bullying you. If they don't want to pay for quality products, tell them to go to Walmart. It won't be nearly as good. It won't be as healthy for them, but let them go. Other people will come. Don't worry. Now, if someone's truly struggling and they're being kind about it and they just honestly can't afford something, and like I said, they really are struggling and not just trying to trick you and get a deal, then if you're in a position to do so, you should help them out. But do not cave to bullies because trust me, there will be other people that are willing to support you because this is a lot of hard work, physically, financially, and emotionally. So don't sell yourself short. Okay, cauliflower is tied. I planted more beans and I planted more corn and put down more nitrogen. Look how nice the winter squash is vining out. There's a little acorn squash. Not so fun fact, I'm allergic to acorn squash, which is really sad because I love the way it tastes. But anyways, here's some pumpkins. I have a video on how to plant pumpkins, so check that out too. Here's the watermelon, it's finally starting to grow. It was stunted for so long. It's just been such a weird spring. Cantaloupe, and look at this. Little baby banana peppers, isn't that cute? There's the eggplant. I think I saw them starting to blossom, let me look. Yeah, a flower is gonna form there, or actually maybe the eggplant. Patty pan squash, that one also looks like a conjoined twin. Sometimes with squash, the first few batches are a little funky and then they go normal. All right, well, there's still lots more to do. I'm gonna go clean the chicken coop and then I'm gonna water some stuff. I planted some purple peppers earlier and they really need some water. The transplants are struggling because they're not adjusted to the life up here yet. So make sure you subscribe, check back. I'll put some photos at the end of some of the stuff from our local bundle this week. Don't forget to check out my other garden videos, subscribe so you don't miss anything, and I'll see you in the next video.